most important thing for any project you do if it's self-directed is to be driven by curiosity and interest because it's really hard to persevere with, with a project to the very end unless you have a good amount of interest in it um, if we can do anything i might as well do something that is interesting hi my name is jane i am a data visualization designer i'm based in toronto and welcome to the new year i'm starting a new video series talking about my process and, and this is specific to design process. So uh, recently I finished up a project um, and I'm looking for something new to explore right now. I'm gonna jump right into it. I went to Amazon and I looked at the bestseller books of 2020. So I know this isn't a very good indicator of trends or market in general, but it was a starting point for me to see what are, what are the things that are on people's minds. And I looked at the top 10 books that sold the best. Uh, the, there are a couple of key insights I had by looking at the top 10 bestseller books for 2020. Uh, the first one is a lot of them were politically driven. So if you look at the top two, and, and just, to, just to clarify, this is only for United States. Um, I wasn't looking at Canada, I was just looking at Amazon.com. And I noticed that politics was huge in terms of what people were turning their attention towards, which isn't surprising. Um, another thing that actually surprised me, because I'm not a parent, is there are a couple of books towards um, children that did really well. So for example, this one's about exercise books and makes sense because not everyone's working from home. Uh, there's remote learning. Um, I think a lot of parents might be having a hard time maybe engaging with their kids or maybe they're afraid of their kids um, lagging behind. But I think a lot of parents are probably trying to purchase more of these exercise books to engage with their children and also to make sure that they're keeping up to pace. Uh, the things that are doing well are the ones that are leveraging brands. So, you know, Barack Obama is technically a brand, right? And Trump is a brand too. He, every, like, it's hard to not know who they are. So um, they, they, these books have done well because it's leveraging that brand. And the reason I'm doing this is just so I can understand what's kind of going on with the rest of the world. Because I'm very much, as a human being, we were very much engrossed within our own bubble, right? Like, I'm not a parent. I would never think that this is doing well, you know? And so um, there are things I won't think about because I'm not in that space. But this is a good way to break out of my own shell. So that's a key learning here. Okay, so project one. I don't have a name for it yet. So this is my first project. And um, this is how I went about trying to figure out what to do for this project so it's the first project of 2021 which is why i'm just calling it project one i'm aiming to maybe have like two more maybe this year i don't know we'll see um a lot of it just up in the air so i love sticky notes so i wrote uh i brainstormed a lot of ideas i had maybe one idea per sticky note and i just kind of wrote them wrote them down and just you know put them down on, on, on it and um, I had a hard time trying to process and synthesize, synthesize from it. So what I did was I created this matrix on my desk and I had this um, matrix to organize everything. So the way I structured it was um, on the X axis on the right hand side, it's showing everything I think that might be low in demand in the market. Like people might not be really interested in it. And on the right and the left was anything that's high demand. So I think maybe it, there's a chance for a lot of people to be interested in it. On the y-axis, I have um, I have it rated on interest. So interest in terms of what I'm interested in. I think this is the most important thing for any project you do if it's self-directed is to be driven by curiosity and interest because it's really hard to persevere with, with a project to the very end unless you have a good amount of interest in it. Um, if we can do anything, I might as well do something that is interesting. And so for me, the key area to focus on are things that are high interest to me and that have potential to be high demand. So I'm looking to create things that I could sell, right? I created these these cards, right? And these are, um, this is pretty much a visual way to browse recipes and they're double-sided. And I would like to create more things like this for data visualization, but targeting a specific market. So this is my idea with um, where to take this and how to move forward. Um, and the way I want to do that is something that intersects at what I'm interested in and I think is in demand. So here's some examples of ideas I came up with. So this one was looking at specific music careers of artists. Um, one example I wrote here was Mac Miller. I recently got into Mac Miller music like I, I was never really interested before but I recently just kind of got into him and he's a really interesting person to think about um, it's really too bad that he passed away because I think he was really at an interesting place with his music 
I, I feel like he just got there. Like he's just getting to such an interesting place as music. Anyways, so I thought it'd be interesting if I could explore something about his life. Maybe we could learn something about who he was. Um, this is one idea I had. So this is on a high interest section, but maybe low demand. It's, it's a very specific topic, right? Um, this one was low interest, but I think there's some demand for it. Is maybe I could visualize how the whole life story of Fortune 100 companies or um, and maybe do this like yearly thing. So I was thinking maybe I could have one card represent one company and then try to somehow summarize what got them to where they were, um, a visual history of them. And then you can kind of compare between cards, right? You can have maybe one company compared to another company, you see, oh, like their timelines to success or whatever it is, their timelines to their sales, uh, a certain amount is different, but this is how they're different because maybe the different markets, different countries, um, the founders, so many factors. There's so many variables I can think of just the top of my head to help define this. But um, so this is an idea I had as well. Um, so this is the one I decided to go with, which is the one with a little sticker here. <laughs> and um, this was in the high interest for me and I think high demand section, which is how do artists make it? Uh, this is a very generic question, which is I think a lot of people have. And this is something I always have, right? Is how come some artists are, you know, how do they make it? How do they get there? Um, and you know, what, what was their history like? What were some of the big breaks? How, how did they get that to happen? How did they create their own luck? Right. And so this is a question I always have. And I think a lot of people have as well. I think we're in the, in the situation in life right now where a lot of people are looking to start their own business, maybe because they were, they have their forced to, maybe they got laid off, right. Because of the pandemic, um, or maybe because, you know, it's a dream. Maybe they want to always pursue this, but they don't know how. So. Of course, there are a lot of books out there that exist. So for me, it's trying to figure out how can I create something that's unique and different without trying to be a copycat of what's already existing. So I, I might, I'll still have to do some research in terms of understanding what's existing in terms of the competitive landscape. I haven't done that yet. Still week one. Okay, so this is the idea I have in mind. Um, the next thing I have to do is try to find what audience this would suit. It's not, it's not enough to just say, oh, I think people will like this and they'll enjoy it. It's more important for me to figure out what kind of specific audience or niches can I go into and help they would benefit from this. So I thought, okay, I'm talking about artists. I'm thinking about artists. So, um, I love using Reddit from our research, um, and understanding what kind of things, um, what kind of things really like get people like what, what gets them thinking about something? What kind of things really bothers them or frustrates them? So I went on a Google search, so it's easier to search through Google for Reddit stuff than on Reddit. I find I don't get better results. I get better results doing it on Google. So I, f I type in making it as an artist Reddit and these are the results I got. And then, you know, I, you can tell I clicked on them. Um, the most interesting post that I came across and I, I just kind of like a rabbit hole. <clears throat> And so this is a post of a AMA, which is ask me anything where this artist talked about how he quit his job and he um, started making a living off of painting. And this is interesting because of many reasons. This guy is very good at documenting what he's talked about. He's very good at explaining how he got to where he is. Um, and it's very detailed, uh, in-depth review of his career. And a lot of people are asking him questions. So this is really important to understand what kind of questions people are asking him and what are the ones that are getting upvoted, right? Cause this is the, like, you know, burning questions people have. And if I can, you know, assemble a series of burning questions, it will help direct what kind of information I should show right with my project and um interestingly i found like a community so the first one was um artist lounge there was another one which was um uh it's the subreddit entrepreneur so i already i have two communities i could work with entrepreneur and um artist lounge and these are like you know tens of thousands of, of community members and this is this is perfect right this is exactly what i need because my process very much um, is dictated by engaging with the community members it's it's really important to test out ideas with them it's not just enough for me to say oh i think this is a good idea and then i assume xyz but then if i pose this idea to these community members and ask for their feedback it's much more powerful for me to use that and say this is something that they would like to use I can go about it in many ways. I can go about it and say, look at all the really prolific artists. So if you think about artists who like end up collaborating with pop cultural icons, I'm going to say his name wrong. Takashi Murakami? Takashi Murakami? Yes. Okay. Or Chantal Martin. I feel like these two are very, they kind of, 
they've they've done such a way of creating themselves at their brand name and i think it's interesting to study them i can even think about industry like do i want to focus on music do i want to focus on uh fine like fine art do i want to focus on people who do oil painting i can really like specialize in many ways still exploring right um trying to find that happy medium so the next step is um trying to organize everything so i spent a little time a little bit of time putting all the information kind of together so that they all kind of make sense. So this is the Notion page I set up. So Notion is like a, I guess it's like a sort of organization tool. Uh, I'm gonna pull it up right here. And so what I did was, um, this is kind of a temporary name I made. I call it making it, I don't know. The name sounds kind of lame, but um, I sort of have a summary of things I'm thinking about. And I think this is really important for me because I have notes all over the place, but I want to keep it centralized. So I keep, keep, keep coming back to it. So here I kind of like have a project overview. I'm focusing on what kind of problem I'm solving. Um, what kind of case studies do I want to go through? This is just a small list. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be building more. Um, what sort of questions do I need to resolve? For example, one thing is, um, you know, I'm always concerned about is, will I be able to find all the information I need uh, for the amount and what kind of depth do I need? there's a lot of unknowns right um and what if it becomes too superficial like what if i don't get enough information to get to the truth of the story right um yeah so i have a list here of all the links that are helpful so this is kind of where i'm at right now okay so that was my first week so far i'm glad i have that matrix in the beginning i showed you where i, I kind of figure out and narrow down ideas um and help me figure out a market to match to that. I think that's really, really, really important. And I'm, I'm really going about it in a way that's evidence-based, right? Even like the Amazon, like going on amazon.com and figuring out whether top books sold, it's not a really good way to indicate what people are thinking about or what's really happening in the world, but it's a good way to start. And that's kind of where I'm at. I'm just starting out. I'm just trying to get some ideas, getting a feel for it. And so that's kind of where I'm at right now. So a lot of things are gonna probably gonna change throughout. So um we'll just see that's that's the design process what can you do everything changes right um at any given time so thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next episode bye